Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. I thought I would do a video on my little holiday away, our road trip, and the yarn adventures I had, and some finished objects, or oh, well, progresses on cows that I have been catching up on since I've been back. Looking a little rough and ready because I decided I'd do a lot of things around the house this week before heading back to work. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, road trip adventure was to take us to Yapoon. That was southeast along the coast, so to speak. And that would be our roundabout where we turn around and come back instead of going all the way to Brisbane. And um, the idea being that we would spend a week in Yapoon, then head back along the way down there. We would stop at different places. And on the way back, we would try and stop somewhere different. So we headed off and we did about half a day's travel to Townsville and decided we'd spend two nights there. One just basically to unwind because I'd been pretty full on before I left and maybe do a bit of shopping. So yes, I went to Spotlight and Lingcraft. Now, Spotlight itself had very um, depleted stocks. Lingcraft was a little better. But both of them didn't have anything great. I think that's a lot to do with the road transport because we have a lot of lockdowns on borders and stuff isn't getting through. However, I did find one ball of yarn at Lincraft Townsville and bought it. And that is this one. Um, I think it was Karen Wright, one of my subscribers. Everybody knows Karen. She said she uses the Baby Soft yarn from Lincraft. And this is Baby Soft print eight ply three weight and I bought it in this color because I'd been looking for a suitable color for my elephant to have a lovey what do you think let me know if you think that's a good match or I should try again because I didn't have the elephant with me but I don't think it's too bad I think it'll make a nice little lovey for this elephant so that was about the only yarn shop uh, shopping I did in Townsville I did go to another place that I found but they were incredibly expensive and mainly fabric so no no didn't do anything so then we moved on to Ellie Beach where we sp spent three nights now there's no yarn shops there there is some charity shops which I went to I didn't really pick up anything nice but the ladies in the charity shops were lovely Ellie Beach is very much a tourist town it is the gateway to the Whit Sunday Islands where everybody stops and goes off to the islands. In the past we've done the islands. We just did a bit of fishing, nothing caught to brag about, but and relaxed. And then we moved on to Yapoon. Now that's a long haul and um probably should have broken it up a bit more. That's more like six to seven hours drive. But what we did do as we were heading that way, stopped off at little towns, but there was one that kept popping up about 100 k's from Yapoon we hadn't heard of called Marlborough. And we decided that's where we would stop for a late lunch. And we pulled off the road into there because it's a town further in. And it's a very small town full of a lot of older people. Um, the lady who runs the general store and takeaway, she she's, must be in her 70s, but She's really good at her job. And while Thing ordered himself some lunch because I wasn't that hungry, I went to the craft museum, the craft and museum, the craft shop and museum. It's sort of all combined into one. It's a little place. And I had a look around. The lady let me take some video. So hopefully it hasn't turned out too bad. And I'll put it at the end of this video. Um, I bought some preserves. Who doesn't like homemade preserves? I bought some what we call um, pickles, like uh, mustard pickles and some jam. But this was strawberry jam with lemon. It is really nice. Anyway, and I made a donation to the museum. And yeah, it was a lovely little stop. And extremely, like, the probably, it says a population of 169. And I reckon 160 of them would be over 60. Anyway, we moved on to Yapoon. There were places we stopped along the way and had a look. Yapoon was lovely. Seven days of just... Look, the accommodation we booked was quite old, old and quaint. 
but it served its purpose. But what was the bonus was the old couple that ran it. The gardens are beautiful. It's lovely and clean. And they were amazing. They were a fountain of information and were more than willing to share with you anything you wanted to know. So they did say to us, you should go up to Emu Park. And they were talking to Thing. I wasn't in the office when they said it. So when he came back and said, well, why don't we go for a drive to Emu Park and see these these emus in this natural nature park and I went okay sounds like a nice day out it was a bit cool and we headed up there the, he couldn't have listened too well emu park is actually a place on the coast has quite some history to it and the emus are iron emus that in front of each historical building the emu holds a plaque about what that building is but there was a find. There was a little craft shop there run by a girl, say, mid-30s. She had a lot of fabric and a lot of sewing, but she did have some yarn. Now, it's birch yarn, and birch yarn is, um, I don't, but I don't know if it's this particular one, is generally carried by the, um, what do they call it? Not the re, um, reject shop. And it's about $2.95 with them, and she had this for $3.50. This is classic 100% yarn, 100% acrylic yarn. And I actually bought three balls of this in this colour because I've never seen it in this colour in the reject shop. How many yards are in each ball? Needle size, four millimetre, of course, it's um, eight ply. It's made in China, 170 metres in each ball. And I bought the three in this colour at $3.50. She was really lovely. It was a lovely shop and it was really amazing um, morning out we had at Emu Park. It was just so much fun. So that was some of the yarn I actually bought. Also there next door to her was a news agency and I went in to check out their magazines and I bought a cool knitting book of these characters. Only $5, a woman's weekly, Australian woman's weekly knitting book. There's some on the back. There's a sloth. There's a penguin, a giraffe. I don't know if I'll ever make them or whether I'll put it in a, um, a giveaway. I've never really looked at it yet. I just bought it because I thought it was pretty cool and $5 was pretty cheap. So that was our trip to Emu Park. Of course, we went over to Great Keppel Island, which is not as great as it used to be. In the 90s, there was a big resort and the slogan was Get Wrecked on Great Keppel. It was really hard to book in. It was always full. Well, we did check that out. The resort is in disrepair and closed and fenced off. Um, the owners are currently looking for a partner with $600 million to help them renovate it and get it back on board. The Queensland government are giving them two more years and if they don't do something with it, it has to be demolished. The actual island was beautiful and I have taken some photos of different things on our trip. I'm not great. I get caught up in the moment and forget to take photos. But whatever photos I have, I will post at the end. So what else? The other find in Yapoon was there was a mature ladies boutique with swimwear for mature ladies. And I was in need of replacing my swimwear and spent quite a bit of money there, like the lady in front of me. Because, yeah, in Cairns they tend to cater for all the little girls and their tiny bikinis but this was awesome and my old swimwear is now my fishing gear yes we went fishing in Yapoon nothing to brag about I also went to their Sunday market um, which the lady at the place who was staying told me about that was brilliant I actually bought some gifts now I'm having a yarn advance shop swap with Karen Prudham from Canada and we decided we would do it and I would send it at the end of September to make sure it got there. And some of the things I bought are for her. So I can't share with you what I got there. And I did buy Saxon, a little dog, a, a bag of treats from the markets. It was a lovely market. So what else did we do in Japan? We decided on the recommendation of our lady, we would go up to the Capricornia Caves and check them out. And we went there. And this would have to be the highlight of our, our road trip. Um, there's two tours for the caves. You can do the Explorer one where you climb through everything and you're fit and go through all the tiny holes. Or you can do the one I did 
which is much more sedate. And actually, they have got wheelchair access to these caves. You all sooner or later end up at the cathedral cage, a cave, and that was what took our breath away. It was amazing. Apparently, they, there's like a stage and a natural forming um, stairwell that the choir can stand on, and they actually do weddings there. Um, the bonus was you sit there on the pews, they play um, Hallelujah on a CD. The acoustics is awesome. The lighting changes that they have in there. And at the end, they put it in complete darkness for 20 seconds. It is dark, trust me. But boy, I highly recommend if you're ever up this way, you go and see the Capricornia Cathedral Cave. It is awesome. From that morning, we've... Thing wanted to go to Byfield, he'd read about it. And I'm like, okay, we'll continue on and have lunch in Byfield, thinking oh, it's just another little town. Well, it was smaller than that. It had a general store come cafe with awesome food, just lovely people. And out the back of the sitting area was this little health food come health and well-being shop. And I went in there and I bought some special teas for my yarn swap person my advance swap with Karen. So I can't show you those. Hopefully when she, if she does get this parcel, you'll see it in her advent openings. But yeah, that was lovely. And on the way heading out, about four kilometres out of there, was this pottery place called Nobs Pottery. Now, I'm not really into a lot of earthenware type pottery, but we decided we're going to have a look. This gallery is just blows you away. There are two galleries and it is full of different artists work. And now it's not all earthenware. There was pottery in like the ocean blue and cream and hot pink and cream and blues and cream. And Thing picked out a teapot he liked for me and he bought me this teapot, uniquely made by Stephen, one of the artists who actually spoke to us. He was there. I think he's actually the owner of the whole property, but yes. It wasn't cheap, but then it's a uniquely handmade teapot. And that was a gift that Thing bought me for her travels, like our little tourist gift. I love it. Highly recommend you visit Nobs Pottery. For someone who's not really into it, I want to go back. So, yes, we had an awesome time down there. And, of course, I did lots of charity shops on the way back. We had a night in Mackay, which was nothing to rave about. Mackay's quite a big place, like council big shopping center but we were in search of a book that Reeves had texted us he wants an, a certain book by a certain author and he said it's only going to be found in charity shops so if you're in a charity shop mum can you check it out and he knows I like charity shopping so along the way I we checked out lots of charity shops we found one book by that author but it wasn't the one he was looking for but we got it anyway it was a dollar our last stop after there in Innisfail, we found another one by that author and got that one too. Not the title he's looking for. But my purchases from the charity shops along the way home were, now there was lots of yarn, but I had decided I don't need yarn from a charity shop. I have far too much yarn. But cottons like that I put on tea towel toppers, sometimes they're not easy to get in the colors I want. So I bought these two from a charity shop. Now these are normally about three dollars uh, each. They've been used slightly. They're almost full, and the two of them were two dollars. I bought these two because I found this colour really hard to get. Same again. Almost used a little bit, and two dollars for the two. Such a bargain. I also found these. This one was two dollars. And this is a Sullivan's um, soft crochet and knitting cotton. Full ball in its packet still, never used. And this one is a, um, I think it's Milford satin two ply. This is $9 a ball in Spotlight and it is unopened, never used. And I paid $2 from a charity shop. I had fun charity shopping. I looked for a lot of buttons um, and I did find some really different buttons. Now these two are obviously handmade by the same person. 
I have to get my glasses. These were two dollars each. Shirley Gleason. No. Jenny J. Made by Jenny J. And they're the same sort of thing. Handmade pottery buttons. There's those three with a bit of bling and they cost me two dollars. And there's those ones. Pottery buttons. A snowman. Looks like a mitten and a star. Aren't they lovely? And they are. They were $2 each. And then I found these, which I thought was a little unusual. I like unusual buttons. These were $1.50 a packet. And then I found these. I can never have enough white or creamy colored buttons. They were a dollar. There's a heart in there. These are a good size. So I did a bit of button shopping when I was um, checking out the charity shops. I also enjoyed making the dolls clothes for um, Wishes for Wings and I went looking for a 18 inch doll and we found this one. I'll just cover at the front. She's naked. She was $2. Now she's probably a little lean but she's 18 inches and she'll make a good model for when I want to make um, dolls clothes for that size because I didn't have anything to really model it on. And then I found this little guy. Now this just caught my eye and I liked it. And I thought it'd be nice to have a boy doll. Everything is there, hence the fig leaf. He was $8. Now on the back, it says something about Belgian, made in Belgian and thing. And Reeves kept looking at him and then he said, I'm going to do some research. And he came back and he said, your doll is worth $70 currently on auction to like him at $70 on eBay. It was made in the 1970s and they're becoming rare. And yes, you can feed him water and yes, he has all the bits and pieces, hence a fig leaf off my patio fig. But isn't he cute? I don't think I'll sell him, but I don't know what I'll make for him to wear, but he has to have some clothes before it gets cold. So that was the yarn adventures I had, visiting charity shops and just having fun and looking at things and enjoying the scenery and the birds. And, oh, it was so relaxing at Yapoon. It's definitely more laid back than anywhere I've been. It is full of retired people. There are younger people. Um, to rent a property, you can't. And to buy a property, if you see it online, you've got to buy it from the virtual um, picture show because there is no time to show it to you. It will go straight away. Um, the lady where we were staying saying Yipoon has become the hot place to be after all the COVID down south. So I did make some projects along the way. I said I was going to make a wind spinner for a friend. I did finish it and this is it. It's quite long. Um, I just made it out, out of two um, colours of acrylic, I have two favourite colours, pink and purple. Look, I find, I don't know if I'm making them too heavy, they're only in three weight, but they don't spin in the wind as well as some other people's do. But Reeves has told me why that is. And if they're off camera like that and they're spinning, he says there's someone up top twirling them, trust me. But yes. I've made it for her and that's what she wanted. I've just got to put some sort of ring on top so she can hang it up. That was one of my on the road projects along with who wouldn't make an opto when you're visiting the waterside and islands. So I made Octo Inky. He's very blue. He's a bit mischievous. But I made in the car, travelling along, probably on the way back I think I did Inky. Isn't he cute? This is the um, dabbling hook pattern. I'll put a link to it. I always do. I love making the octos and coming up with names and different looks. It's a really great amigurumi. And yes, I am still trying to do an amigurumi a month. Now, I did do another big project and it is finished, but I need two buttons for it. And I wanted to show you when I put the buttons and finally finished it, we did go to spotlight here. I found buttons, but they were $15 each, and I am not spending $30 on buttons for a project that's it's just that's just exorbitant. Tomorrow we're going up to my little craft person 
in Milanda on the Tablelands and having a day out since as we've done so much work around home and I'm going to check her out but hopefully in the next video I'll bring that to you so that's it guys I was going to do the catch up on all the cows I've been doing but I think the video is long enough I'll just pause it a minute Maybe next time I'll do all the cows. I have caught up on Nan's next and lots three weeks. I've done the birthstone make along the blue section. And I have started Zeta's calendar cow for September. I finally decided on the colours that would sort of go with the picture. But I hope you enjoyed hearing about my yarn adventures when you travel. It is awesome checking out secondhand bookshops and charity shops and finding really unusual things like him i haven't named him yet um but he is from uh, belgium so i might have to think of a name that represents belgium so guys until next time thank you to all those little subscribers who keep coming back and watching me that's just about my holiday in a nutshell there were lots of other places we went there will be photos at the end of course, Thing likes a mango, and who wouldn't like a bow and mango? But yes, we had a lot of fun and really relaxed. Okay, till next time, take care, stay safe. And remember, you can have a crafty day making yourself an octo and making him or her unique and coming up with a name. From me to you, in Inky and I, we say goodbye. Bye for now. Look at the, I have to show the snake. Look at that, Joe. <laughs> You're making a snake. Oh, wow. Oh, my glasses are in the frame. Look at the tea cozy. It's lovely. All this handmade stuff. <laughs> to find something. <laughs> Isn't <that> awesome? <laughs> This is the view from the first lookout on Great Keppel Island. There is a second lookout, but this one nearly killed me getting to it. Bottle brush in bloom. It was raining when we arrived and it's beautiful and sunny now. And look at those beautiful crystal clear waters. I think it's time to head back for a swim.